Welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Think 2024. I'm so excited to chat with Heather, uh, Director of Product Management at uh, Watson X Governance. So, Heather, welcome to the Robert Show. Thank you, Ravid. It's great to be here today. The energy at Think 2024 is unreal. I've, it's day two, and I'm, I've had like so many conversations with your customers, partners, the community, and I love it. And governance is one thing that is on everyone's mind. So uh, let, we'll definitely talk a lot about governance, but just before that, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience, and uh, would you also like to tell us more about what you do at IBM? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Uh, so as Director of Product for What's Next Governance, I focus on helping organizations adopt AI responsibly, explainably, and transparently in a way that scales across the enterprise. It's very interesting, and to be honest, I'm going to jump right in because uh, you know the most uh, questions that have been asked by the audience is like, how do we implement uh, governance? Mm -hmm. So my question is like, what are the key considerations for effective AI governance and the implementation as well? Can you share a little about that? Absolutely. So what we're seeing is that go AI governance is becoming much more strategic to organizations. Right. Because if AI is supporting your business strategy, and at IBM we do a lot with AI for business, you need to make sure that you have a governance framework in place right. that not only supports your innovation opportunity, but also mitigates risk. True. Um, so what we're seeing is really a, a deviation, a, a progression in the way that organizations are using are viewing AI governance programs. Back with predictive machine learning, a lot of organizations um, looked at governance as siloed projects. There'd be a request by the business and data science and IT would support that request, but it was very siloed in terms of how AI was being adopted, supported by a lot of different technologies in silos for business, silos for different geographies. Right. And now we're seeing organizations take the opportunity to really elevate their AI governance programs to be more strategic and mm. include more stakeholders throughout the organization. Because in order to have an informed view of a governance program that reflects the organization's ethics, their cultures, their values, you really do need to start at the top with the C-level mm. and bring together diverse stakeholders with the right inputs. So it's no longer an exercise between the business, data science, and IT. Oh yeah. Um, organizations are bringing in their chief privacy officers, their chief data officers. Risk and compliance certainly have a voice. Um, the chief a HR officer from the employee perspective, yep. both the employee's use of AI and also use cases that can be adopted to help with their productivity. Right. Um, marketing from a reputational risk standpoint. Um, so by bringing all these folks together, you're able to define those goals and also the, the risk management framework for adopting AI. And then the best practice is really to cascade that down mm. um, to different levels of management and quite honestly to the employee level. Um, what we're seeing is very similar to how organizations approach data privacy. Right. AI becomes an uh, aspect of every employee's job in terms of the opportunity that they may have to work with this technology. Right. So training programs and making sure that employees understand both the opportunities and um, risks associated with AI become very important. It's the essentials, I guess, uh, when you're talking about AI governance yes. uh, and uh, governance as well. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, just on that topic itself, I know uh, you know that is more about the essentials you spoke about, but also about the reg regulatory landscape. Mm -hmm. I want to know a little about that as well. So how is the evolving regulatory landscape impacting AI governance strategies? Do you have any thoughts around that? Yeah, I do. This is an area where we do a lot of work. Exactly. Um, so when it comes to regulation, there's been AI regulation proposed going back to 2017 and even further. Right. And I think the challenge um, traditionally has been the regulation wasn't very prescriptive. It was aspirational and talked about things like explainability, transparency, data privacy, all of the considerations you need to responsibly adopt AI but really didn't break out discrete requirements. Right. 
uh, we saw a big change with the approach that Europe took with the EU AI Act, mm. where over 265 pages of detail that do include qualitative and quantitative requirements that can be set to controls. Right. Um, so that has really created a lot of investment in that geography um, with clients in Europe ramping up their risk and compliance programs. Yeah. Um, you know, broadening their control libraries in order to be in compliance. And we're seeing in the United States, um, certainly there's been a lot of um, support out of Washington DC with the executive order last year. Right. But even on the state level, more than 22 states now have proposed state level AI, AI. regulation. Uh, so we see it expanding very rapidly. This is great. And, uh Obviously, you don't only manage like US, but it's all over the world as well. So, Correct. And we've seen Europe obviously playing a very important role in the governance space, but yes. now uh, even US, we've seen so much that's happening here in the governance space. Well, Asia is interesting too. I spent a couple of weeks in Asia earlier this year. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And in Singapore in particular, the approach that MAS, the regulatory agency out there took, yes. was very innovative because not only did they issue guidance, Mm. But they're also providing a toolkit that organizations can use free of charge right. to experiment with generative AI, try out use cases, and really align how they're approaching AI with the guidance from their regulator. Right. And that is the perfect balance. You don't want to stifle in innovation, but you want to provide that clear guidance so that organizations do understand what exactly it means to responsibly adopt AI. That's awesome. So uh, you, you're kind of literally covering globally uh, mm -hmm. with governance, so which is fantastic. Uh, my quick question is around what's in X governance. Mm -hmm. So how are you, uh, you, you know, covering a, uh, the AI model space like responsibly? So how does what's in X governance helps in managing, how does it help basically in managing the uh, AI models responsibility, can you can you tell a little about that? Absolutely, so I think the approach that we've been able to take at IBM to governance with our technology is very unique because what we're providing is a single unified platform right. that supports governance of both predictive machine learning as well as generative AI, um, but it's completely open. So we can govern any third-party AI application right. and any open source or third-party model on any cloud using API connectors. Mm. Um, and we had a big announcement yesterday with AWS. They're a great partner of IBM. I saw that, yes. And uh, we spent about a year collaborating with them to build out-of-the-box integration to provide governance of SageMaker. Yeah. Um, and down the road, we'll be um, governing Bedrock as well. Uh, but this could be done today on any wow. platform, Azure, GCP, with a little back-end connection using these API calls. True. Um, we take a very holistic approach to governance. We really focus on three pillars. One is lifecycle management, True. which begins at the time the use case is requested by the business. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is building an audit trail of every step in the process towards the adoption and deployment of that model. Right. Um, with risk management, we're doing real-time monitoring um, comparing the performance of the model when it was tested, trained, and selected to behavior at runtime. Mm -hmm. And if there's any standard deviation of the performance, we send a, a real-time alert when the standard deviation is significant enough. Right. So that can be immediately investigated. And that helps maintain confidence in the model when you think about risks like drift, performance changes, bias, exactly. and a lot of the new challenges with LLMs, like hallucinations, which we'd never oh thought yeah, about before. For sure. Um, and then finally, the third pillar is compliance. We talked a lot about regulation already. But for us, compliance includes the organization's policies and procedures, mm. industry standards like NIST AI, um, and the emerging regulations that are, are certainly growing in number. These are great three pillars for sure, and kind of keeps you uh, going in the line where everything's managed pretty well. Uh, quick question around transparency and explainability that I had. Mm -hmm. So why are transparency and explainability critical uh, in AI workflows, and how does Watson uh, governance address them? Do you have any thoughts around that? Yeah, so AI adoption can't be a black box. Um, and that's been an area of focus for some time. Um, 
organizations adopting AI need to understand not only the benefits and the ROIs that they're, they're planning to achieve, but what's happening in the model in order to get the results that they're looking for. True. And so explainability is, is really important because it helps to um, validate that the approach that you're taking to adopt AI in support of the use case makes sense and is sound. Um, so that happens in a number of ways. We do things like run a risk assessment on the use case to understand what level of risk supporting this brings to the organization. Right. Um, we also do compliance assessments to determine what controls the use case and the models supporting it right. uh, need to have in place. Um, and then explainability continues through runtime because we're evaluating the performance of the model and making sure that it is performing as intended and nothing's changed. If something's changed, you have to investigate and find out why yeah. and remediate. Yeah. And so all of that helps to ensure about the explainability and the transparency because you're understanding the purpose of the AI adoption in support of the use case mm. and all the decisions that went into selecting the model and deploying the model and how that model's behaving at runtime. This, this is fantastic. Thanks for all those insights. Uh, in uh, Definitely transparency and explainability has played a very important role in governance and will do in the future as well. Absolutely. Uh, quickly jumping on to the, a little, like shifting gears a little bit about uh, wanting to know about the future of AI governance mm -hmm. too. So I'm pretty sure you all are always so, uh, on point and make sure that you're mm -hmm. also uh, making sure that the risks in the future are already seen. So how mm -hmm. is IBM preparing for the future of AI governance? Would you like to share a little about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Um, so we see AI governance continuing to evolve. Um, organizations today are looking at ways where they can move along the maturity curve in terms of how they're approaching governance. Right. And there's a lot of innovation opportunity there. We've seen in the past year, people focus on experimenting with generative AI and now starting to think about moving to production, production. or moving internal right. use cases to production, which certainly heightens the focus on monitoring capabilities and the development of guardrails. Mm -hmm. We partner very closely with IBM Research, who experiment with all sorts of data science methodologies, yeah. um, which we productize as guardrails and then automate that in the software. So you'll see a lot more of that, um, different guardrails that we're bringing to market. We are doing a lot of collaboration work with IBM Security right now mm. um, because of cyber risk cyber of risk. models moving to production and needing to protect those models. Um, so security will continue to be a very important foundation layer to what we offer. Oh wow, yeah. But definitely expect to see a lot of changes coming with governance in the next year. This is amazing. The, the, the thing that I love about IBM is you all, ha you all have different stakeholders. They mm -hmm. all come together and serve a purpose at the same time and make yeah. sure that all departments are winning. So that's awesome, but uh, I don't know, being careful of time, uh, you know, Heather, it was such a pleasure hosting you on the Rabbit Show, I think 2024 year at, uh, I, uh, you know, in Boston. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to chatting more and keeping this co uh, conversation going, but just one question for our audience, if they want to reach out, which is the best place? Is LinkedIn a best place? Maybe Twitter or some other social platform? Yeah, so if you want to reach out to me, um, definitely find me on LinkedIn. It's Heather Gentile at IBM. Um, if you want to learn more about Watson X, our IBM.com website has a great Watson X landing page with short recorded demos, free trial accounts, and white papers. Resources, about, wow, yeah, oh, I love absolutely, it. absolutely free. Um, awesome. So definitely explore and looking forward to connecting with your audience. Awesome, thank you very much everyone for joining us today.